Despite being very popular in the early 20th century, biological explanations of crime fell out of favor entirely for several decades after World War II, following the revelations of the Holocaust and the role that those early theories played in it. I have other videos exploring that in greater depth, which you can check out. There are links in the description below. During this time, little serious consideration was given to biological factors in trying to understand human nature. And it wasn't until the 1970s that biological factors started to be taken seriously again, but this time with a clear rejection of biological determinism. In other words, biological factors were not considered to be the sole cause of criminal behavior. Instead, these modern biological theories argue that each individual is unique, and there is no one universal explanation for criminality. Often referred to as biosocial theories, they recognize that while biological factors can predispose someone toward engaging in criminal or antisocial behavior, the social environment is also a necessary component. So according to biosocial theories and the debate over nature versus nurture, the answer is simple. Both play an important role. And the question then becomes identifying the extent of the relative influences of different biological and social or environmental factors. So let's take a look at some of these biosocial theories, which generally can be divided into four major areas, genetics, biochemical, neurophysiological, and evolutionary. To build off of the early biological theories, let's start with genetics. The idea is that genetics shape how we interpret our environment and learn socially. We inherit predispositions to certain behaviors. These behaviors are more likely to occur given the right set of social or environmental circumstances. This includes criminal behaviors. The research on genetic influences on crime particularly look for similarities between parents and children, and also among siblings. A child who has parents or siblings, particularly siblings of the same sex, that are involved in crime are more likely to engage in crime themselves. Studies comparing the criminal records of twins have found greater patterns of criminality among identical twins, those who share the same identical genetic makeup, as opposed to fraternal twins. And studies of boys adopted at birth have found the highest rates of arrest among boys with both adoptive and biological fathers with criminal histories. And the lowest rates were among those with biological or adoptive fathers who had no criminal histories. So this indicates that there is likely a genetic influence here, but there is much we don't know about the nature of this relationship. Just because two things are found to be related does not mean we know exactly how they're related. It doesn't mean that one causes the other. And we don't know exactly what may have been inherited that relates to criminality. Is it genetics, neurophysiology, temperament, or something else? Or are there environmental factors that may explain the correlation? Prenatal care, nutrition, environmental toxins, susceptibility to alcohol or drug addiction, and many other potential factors. Speaking of which, this points to the next set of biosocial theories that argue crime, and especially seemingly irrational violence, is a function of biochemical imbalances that negatively influence behavior. The research on these theories primarily focuses on diet, hormones, allergies, and environmental contaminants, such as lead intake. What we eat or don't eat can certainly influence our behavior. An over or undersupply of certain chemicals and minerals can lead to psychological imbalances. If we eat a bunch of junk, we're not gonna feel as well, such as having too much sugar or too many high carb foods. Not eating can also impact our behavior. I myself am certainly guilty of being hangry after I haven't gotten food in a while, something that my friends and family members can certainly attest to. If we eat foods that are good, nutritious, filling, we're going to feel better and ultimately behave better. Another factor is hormonal influences. Hormones can cause areas of the brain to become less sensitive to environmental stimuli, things happening in the environment that register in the brain. Decreasing levels of hormones as men get older is one theory for declining crime rates over the life course environmental contaminants, lead being the most obvious, also copper, cadmium, mercury, and inorganic gases that can all cause emotional and behavioral disorders, illnesses, and even death. Lead exposure is of particular concern, especially with its long-term effects on childhood development. In fact, the concentrated effort to eliminate exposure to lead since the 1970s is one prominent theory for why crime rates declined so much beginning in the 1990s. Another set of biosocial theories are neurophysiological, looking at how the brain functions, with the idea that impairments of executive brain functioning can lead to increased impulsive and aggressive behavior, thus increasing the risk of engaging in criminal behavior. This could come in many different forms. One is brain structure. Not quite like that. No, 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 we're all done with that now. 
tumors, lesions, injuries, disease can all cause damage to the brain itself, leading to a greater risk of depression, irritability, temper outbursts, and violent attacks. Some studies looking at EEG readings of electrical impulses given off by the brain have recorded much higher levels of abnormal readings indicating brain dysfunction among violent criminals. Another is brain chemistry, which looks at abnormal levels of certain neurotransmitters in the brain, such as dopamine and serotonin, which have been linked to impulsivity, hyperactivity, lack of attention, and sensation and thrill-seeking. For similar reasons, some research has also shown links between criminality and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. The arousal theory argues that some people's brains respond differently to environmental stimuli, and the need for greater levels of stimulation and sensation can lead them toward riskier, thrill-fulfilling behaviors, including crime and violence. So it's likely that all these factors are closely related, looking at the same problem through different lenses, and it's difficult to break apart how much influence each one has. I have other videos on different psychological theories that explore some of these connections further. There's a link in the description below. You can check that out. And the final area of biosocial theories is evolutionary theory. The major premise of evolutionary theory is that adaptive traits became ingrained as humans evolved because they were necessary for survival, especially when competing for scarce resources. This includes traits that promote more aggressive and impulsive behavior. And this is one of the explanations for the differences in crime patterns between males and females, especially violent crime. And while these traits were highly adaptive in the past and are still certainly necessary today to an extent, they don't fit in as well in our modern society, especially higher levels of aggressiveness and impulsivity. And this predisposes some men toward violence and other crime. So that's just a brief overview of some of the modern biosocial theories of crime. There's a lot more to go over, but that's just the broad strokes. There's certainly sufficient evidence to indicate there may be a biological influence on criminal behavior, but none of these biosocial theories are definitive. Some have more support than others, and they've been subjected to only limited testing, mostly in clinical settings with small sample sizes. So there's much we really don't know. But this body of research continues to grow. And if there is indeed a biological influence on criminality, it's important to remember that it merely predisposes some individuals to an increased risk of potential criminal behavior. It takes the right combination of influences in the social environment to actually trigger that predisposition, which is something that we're still trying to get a handle on. Much left to learn. You can check out my other videos on early biological explanations of crime, including the negative impacts that they had, as well as psychological theories. There'll be links on the screen and in the description below. And until next time, thank you for watching and have a good one.